Hi there. As we all know, food is an integral part of any gathering. And today we're going to highlight some of Ireland's best cuisine and those responsible for making it. Gathering TV recently travelled to Dumbrody House in Wexford to meet its celebrity chef Kevin Dundon. Kevin shared his special recipe for seafood chowder with us using only the finest locally sourced ingredients. So let's have a look at the master in action. <laughs> Hi, I'm Kevin Dundon and I'm from Dumbrody House in the sunny southeast of Ireland. And you know what? The gathering to me is so special to bring everybody home back to Ireland in 2013 and sit down to a beautiful meal cooked and prepared, you know, by yourself or by me. It's up to you. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a lovely seafood chatter because I think because Ireland is an island, we're surrounded by seafood. Scallops here, which come from Kilmore Key, some mussels, we've got some fresh cod, some salmon, and uh, some vegetables, and of course we've got that beautiful Irish dairy cream and butter. I call this a seafood chowder, which is not really seafood chowder, it's more of a seafood infusion of beautiful seafood, infused with white wine and cream and a bit of butter. And you know when, when you try this, oh, you're just gonna die and go to heaven. So I've got some potatoes here, and we're just gonna chop that up, like so. Probably enough, and we have some leeks. And we're very fortunate, we've got a beautiful kitchen garden here in Dumbrody House. It's important when you're making the seafood cheddar that you use a combination of shellfish, smoked fish, and fresh fish. It's organic farm salmon, and it's, it's, uh, it's really good. And then we bring it here, and then we smoke it ourselves. And it's just, mm. The chap that smokes the fish for us is a guy called Dana Roach. He's 85 years of age, and he's just so passionate about how he smokes the fish and you can see it and I think when you're actually passionate about, uh, about food and what you do it comes through in your ingredients and in your dishes. So we've got some salmon here, just going to take the skin off, finally we get our scallops. Make sure that all your pieces in your seafood chowder are kind of bite sized that will actually fit on your spoon so when you go to eat it it's just perfect. Butter in our pan and in with your vegetables straight away into that. Now it's important at this stage that you put in a little bit of salt because salt is a flavour enhancer. A little bit of pepper and then basically what we're doing is we're actually building the flavours of this seafood chowder by putting in our smoked salmon first and you're going to get that smokiness coming through. And you can actually smell those aromas already. They're just like really on fire. In with our, our mussels. A little bit of white wine. And cream. Ooh, look at that cream. Okay, we'll pop in our seafood. Once your seafood goes in, you literally just want to simmer that. You don't want to get too aggressive with it or else you're going to break up your seafood. Look at that, it's not just beautiful. Oh man, this looks divine. Into our bowl then, look at that, look at that. I mean, sorry lads, I just can't resist. I really can't resist. I have to get a spoon, I have to pick that up and I have to, you know, dig in. And, mm, mm. I mean, this is what a gathering's all about. A nice bunch of people sitting around the table. Come on guys, come to Ireland 2013, The Gathering. Another chef who's very excited about The Gathering is a lady who has produced 15 books in 20 years. She's very well known in this country and very well respected too. And she's delighted to invite her fellow foodies and chefs to the inaugural Ballymaloo Literary Food and Wine Festival, which takes place this May Bank Holiday weekend between the 3rd and the 6th of May. It is, of course, Darina Allen. I'm Darina Allen and for me The Gathering is just a fantastic idea uh, to invite all our family and friends from all over the world to come back uh, to Ireland again and of course to also encourage people who've never been to Ireland to come over and uh, 
to experience our hospitality and our food. Our gathering at Ballymaloo is the inaugural Ballymaloo Food and Wine Literary Festival and that will take place over the Maybank holiday weekend from the 2nd to the 5th of May. We'll have cooks and chefs and food writers coming from all over the world to Ballymaloo to read for us, to cook for us. So it's going to be an amazing weekend with a whole lot of fringe events on the side as well. My dream, vision, hope uh, for the gathering is that all around Ireland, every pub, cafe, restaurant, hotel, golf club, whatever, that every single one of them have at least one traditional Irish dish on the menu. So we hope to see you at Ballymaloo House and at Ballymaloo Cookery School for the gathering in 2013. Kinsale is known as the gourmet capital of Ireland and each October it hosts the Gourmet Festival, one of the longest running food festivals in the country. Now one of the highlights is the food trail which stops at 12 different venues and showcases local produce like seafood and cheeses. So let's have a look. This is Kinsale, this is a beautiful old historic town. It has become the gourmet capital of Ireland and it jealously and zealously guards that reputation. I'm Derek Davis. My job here is compare and facilitator, chief head case, I suspect, in what is one of the most successful and perhaps one of the more eccentric food festivals in Europe. You're welcome to the 34th Bollinger Kinsale Gourmet Festival. Well, the theme of the, the food trail is the Mad Hatter's Tea Party, and they'll be led around the trail by characters from Alice in Wonderland. You'll recognise them all the March Hare, the Mad Hatter, Alice and so on. I'm Maria, but today I'm Alice in Wonderland and I'm leading a group of about 125 people around to uh, the venues where we have the 12 restaurants. In this little town of just 3,000, there are 58 places to eat. 12 of them are fine dining restaurants, part of the good food circle. They're the people that run this event. It's a mirth making festival, um, but it also highlights local produce because we are surrounded here in the heart of West Cork by some of the finest artisan producers in the country. And that's why you'll find the very best seafood, which is almost a signature of this town. You'll find the best cheeses, preserves, smoked foods, and so on. It's lovely. And we just pick it and we just cook it. Just all you need to do is cook it for about two minutes. It's like, like, like regular asparagus, you know? People come to Kinsale, they expect to see top class seafood, top class shell shellfish. It's what everyone wants when they come to Kinsale, really. So I think that's the, the general theme running through most of the restaurants at Kinsale is, is top end seafood. So. so that's why the Kinsale experience is unique, not just in the quality here, but in the quantity that's available, the choice that you get. That's Kinsale, and that's the Gourmet Festival. I'm Derek Davis, a survivor of 23 festivals so far, hoping I'll make 24. And of course, Kinsale isn't the only town in West Cork that celebrates food. Skibbereen is home to a taste of West Cork. 2013 marks the 10th anniversary of the first festival. It runs over 10 days and the focus is on the tastings of local artisan produce. <laughs> My name is Claire Gallagher from A Taste of West Cork in Skibreen. Um, we've had a wonderful festival. It's um, with 10 days, starting on the 9th of September, finishing tomorrow in Grand Finale Food and Craft Market in Skibreen. We've had so many different events, lots of tastings again. It's all about tasting the West Cork produce, the arts and food, and that's what we're about, really. My name is Morgan Hurley and we're a Tornil Organic Farm. We, we supply a lot, a lot of the organic section to, to a lot of restaurants, shops in West Cork, whatever.
My name is Michal Hurley. I'm from Skibbereen. I've been involved with A Taste of West Cork for the past eight years. Well, when we started the festival initially eight years ago, there were a number of producers got involved. But it, it's amazing that since that time, I believe the festival has encouraged new producers to develop and grow and, and get their business started. We're here at the, just outside the country house on the Lissard Estate. Um, we're absolutely chuffed to be involved in the Taste of West Cork um, programme. It's been a phenomenal week, of course, which kicked off here at Lissard last Friday. We're a country estate right in the middle of the most wonderful um, uh, food producing region of Ireland. Our commitment here is we bring food from a maximum of 50 kilometres from the property and in fact we often have food from just around Skibbereen. And now we travel from Cork to Kerry, where local cows are the secret behind Murphy's famous ice cream. Sean and Kieran Murphy have been making their ice cream since 2000, and they make it from scratch down in Dingle. Everything is locally produced and sourced right down to the collection of local sea salt for their famous sea salt ice cream. My name is Sean Murphy and we started Murphy's Ice Cream here in 2000. At the time, there was only big factory, uh, industrial level ice cream really available at the time. And given the extraordinary quality of the milk and the cream in Ireland, it seemed wanting that somebody would be making it into top class uh, ice cream here. The milk is not only local milk, it's Kerry cow milk, from the breed, the Kerry cow. Um, which is an indigenous breed, meant to be one of the oldest milking breeds in the world. There are very few left, there are fewer in the world than giant pandas. Uh, but the milk is extraordinarily flavoursome. That's true. Once they discovered that the, the Kerry breed were uh, a rare and uh, maybe endangered breed, you know, this was their bit to help save the breed, you know. Here at Murphy's Ice Cream we have uh, 16 flavours always in our shops and they change, some of them do, some of them don't. We, uh, we have to keep some of our favourites. So we have a good range of products we think and a, a good range of ice creams. We actually make most of what we do ourselves so we don't buy them things like caramel sauce, we actually make them ourselves. So we take a lot of pride that we make everything from scratch here. We have um, two shops in Dublin, in, in Wicklow Street and Temple Bar. We have a shop in Killarney, we have a shop in Dingle, and we have a little seasonal shop um, back west in Valley Fair too. We always wanted to make an ice cream here that was as close to what you would make yourself. Another product to come out of Kerry and West Cork is cheese and Val Manning of Manning's Emporium said that Irish cheese is just as good if not better than those that come from France. Would you believe there are over 60 varieties of artisan farmhouse cheese available here including Goubin, Cashel Blue and Carrigaline. Cheese 
pieces do reflect the character of the area in which it originates and also of the cheese maker. My name is Dal Manning from Manning's Emporium, Balaliki, and this is our, this is our speciality, our cheese board. The smoked gubby from the Ferguson family, Alhan Mizen Head. My parents started in the 40s, I took over from them in 79. My mum was a good cook. Uh -huh. My father kept a few Jersey cows on his 15 acres of land. We revived it, all of us around here, they make good cheese in France, but maybe not as good as some of the Irish ones. My name is Pat O'Farrell and we make uh, Caligaline Farmhouse Cheese. Everything we do is handmade here, as you can see. It's hand pressed into the moulds. There's something about um, the blessedness of cheesemakers, there's something very monastic, I think, about cheesemaking itself. What we do here is we make cheese and uh, we do it from the local grazing that you find here. So we've got all this lovely rain, you know, which everyone's mad about. And what it means is that we can produce lots of grazing for cows. This cheese wanted to be here and what we did was to make something that wanted to be here. There's no point in growing vegetables that don't uh, like our weather. In Ireland we have 65 unique varieties of farmhouse cheese twice the amount of cheeses per person in this country as you do in France. So, yeah, we do certainly have a massive resurgence. I'm, I'm Jeff Gill and I make Doris cheese. I started making cheese as an experiment first, just for, uh, just for us, because we liked eating cheese. The cheese business grew very much um, embryonically. You get people coming because we're mentioned in quite a few guides, so people will come and see where Doris is made. And when they come, they say, is this the only place where Doris is made? Because it's sold so widely. But they can't believe it just comes from this one small place. And of course, cheese and a whole lot more will be on display at the annual Dingle Food Festival, set to take place between the 3rd and the 6th of October throughout the Dingle Peninsula. The programme will include taste trails across different venues, wine tasting, food stalls, entertainment and much more. My name is Maurice O'Brien. I'm on board here with uh, Dingle Food and Wine uh, Festival simply because I come from the area, I'm involved with food, I enjoy food. It's a great weekend. Um, I think it's become a calendar weekend event now at this stage. We've decided this year that we would have um, eight demonstrations, four on Saturday and four on Sunday. Uh, overall it's been fabulous, it's been uh, such an amount to try and mention everybody you'd nearly forget. But it's been very, very successful, the crowds have been enormous coming into the church. And I just mentioned to St James's Church as well, who allow us to use this facility, which is a fantastic facility. Very relaxed atmosphere inside here, and I think that's what the beauty of it is. And, and people are fascinated by coming up through the church yard way to see all all the food stalls coming up and then to enter in and sit down in comfort and they can come and go as they please which is the beauty of it it's not uh, closed sessions or anything like that and all the chefs are very comfortable with people coming in all the demonstrators are very comfortable with people coming in and out
The Food Trail is um, all the businesses in Dingle um, come on board. Um, it's usually through taster menus that they do for the weekend and each um, premises is doing something specific that they like to do or that's one of their signatures maybe or some bit of promotion of uh, local produce here in Dingle. And people can actually uh, go around, start from number one to number 50 if they wish and have a taster on each little place that they go to. I think it's probably one of the signatures of the food festival is the taste trail. Not often you get to eat in 10 or 12 um, top class excellent restaurants and be able to taste their food all for 20 euro for the booklet. So people really enjoy that aspect of it and, and it's entertaining. If you do make it down to Dingle for the Food and Wine Festival, you'll more than likely have tasted the local seafood on offer. Now, fishing is a way of life for many in Dingle. Take, for example, Ted Brown, which is a local family business since 1984, processing salmon, crab and prawn. The fresh seafood caught by Dingle's fishermen goes straight from the water to the plate of many local restaurants. My name is John Brown and I work for Ted Brown's of Dingle. We process crab, salmon and prawns in the, fa in the factory back the road. We have about eight boats fishing crab here. And the crab is sold mainly in Ireland and we have a small bit of export to Scotland and Portugal. Ted Brown started the business in 1984 and it has progressed since then. He was originally a fisherman and before that he was a chef. My father now is 62 so he's <laughs> getting close to retirement and I've stepped in his shoes. My name is Irene Mees, I'm Flemish. I'm here 44 years, so that should qualify me as a carryman, I presume. And I do sell shellfish tanks for supermarkets and restaurants. And I go to Belgium with live lobster and prawns from Ted Brown and crab and that sort of stuff. And I love every bit of it. And it's hard work, but if I don't have work, I go bananas. <laughs> All fish are our local fish, smoke as well. I have whole fish mackerel that way, that I smoked yesterday. So I use a smoke fish to use for the dip. Or oh, with more pate, set with some seaweed, caragin moss. Everything is kind of a local source and can be wild to organic food. Irish man, 100%.
Okay, so what we got here is some lovely Dingle Bay crab claws. These are nice, fresh claws. So what we're going to do, we're going to heat our pan gently. We're going to add the brandy and get a nice little flame off it. Now we're going to add some cream to make up our sauce. And while we wait on that, we're going to add a little bit of lime zest. A little bit of lime juice to it. Then we're going to do a little bit of fresh coriander. Finally, we're just going to taste it. That's good, we got the lime, the coriander coming through. And now we go back to County Cork, where the focus is not just on eating amazing food, but on how to create it as well. And so we visit what surely must be one of the world's smallest cookery schools on Hare Island, big enough for just two students. But according to its owners, John Desmond and Elmarie Fenton, the only requirement is an enthusiasm for cooking. <laughs> Fennel, do you know fennel, what fennel is? What you have to do, remember when you do mayonnaise, all your ingredients have to be at room temperature. sugar, 100 mils of white wine and vinegar, and 100 mils of water, that's it. He loves bacon. I'm joined now by the director of the Italian School of Cooking, Giuseppe Cruppi, who has helped to organise a number of business-to-business -business meetings specifically for the year of the gathering. Giuseppe, how are these meetings going and what's involved? Ciao Laura, it's a pleasure to have you at the Italian School of Cooking. Uh, so uh, there are different events that we are organising. The school itself is a gathering place mm -hmm. where people come. So it's a meeting of culture, if you like, because we bring people to Ireland and then we bring Italy around them. So the, the reception is very good because uh, the Irish people like to travel and come back, which mm -hmm. is what the gathering is about. So the, their curiosity is constantly stimulated and we can see that they are actually quite happy to enjoy Italian products, but also to rediscover Irish produce uh, through Italian recipes. What sort of food is presented at these meetings? It's uh, Italian food, but uh, we'd actually like to have uh, um, Irish products because we'd like the Irish people to rediscover and mm -hmm. take pride in the Irish products uh, through uh, Italian recipes. You see, like the Mediterranean diet is not about the use of basil, but local and seasonal ingredients. So. 
Now, the purpose of these business to business meetings is to strengthen the link between Italy and Ireland, specifically in the food sector. Do you think that's working? It's working very well, also because it's a marriage made in heaven. Italy love Ireland, Irish people love Italy. So it's not something that we have to create, it's surfing a wave that is already there. And uh, you see, the gathering is about a meeting of culture, so which is an enriching experience for everybody. And can anyone come to your gatherings here at the cooking school? That's true. We bring them here for the people in the field, but also for the general public who can come to our business to business meeting just to have really free food and wine and taste the best of the Italian productions. But also they can come here and cook with those ingredients for team building events or private parties where they start from scratch making an Italian meal. And of course, if people at home are inclined to come out and meet you and to participate in one of these gatherings, all they have to do is log on to the website, the gathering Ireland.com and search for a flavour of Italy. Is that correct? Perfect, oh yes. And we are looking forward for them to come here to the Italian School of Cooking. <music>